When you visit a woodland that is thriving, a woodland that is natural and teeming with life, this of course has quite a lot to do with the trees, but it actually has a lot to do with the understory too, the life beneath the canopy. After all, a woodland without an understory is just a bunch of trees. The understory is made up of a dynamic mix of many different species, all kinds of plants ranging from shrubs, fungi, mosses, lichens, to wildflowers and climates. When all of these elements are present over many, many years, woodlands feel and are more complete. And here at Mossy Earth, we recognize that there are actually many woodlands which are missing these components. So often, newly planted woodlands mature with their plastic guards still attached and with little to no species diversity making up the ground flora. And other times, it's natural woodlands that have been mismanaged with both standing and fallen deadwood being removed. So, uh, so welcome to Scotland here for our understory restoration project. I'm here with Ellie and Peter, they're over there in the woods having a chat. And today we're going to be giving you an update on our understory restoration project. This is actually episode two in our understory restoration series. And we're back with Peter, who runs Ada Enterprises, a homegrown nursery which focuses on sourcing and cultivating rare plants in Scotland. We're going to be taking a look at two different sites where we've been working with Ada, taking a look at their nursery, and Ellie, our biologist, will be explaining how we plan to expand and improve this project overall. But before we do that, you might be wondering what even is an understory and why is it worth restoring? Now, although trees are essential to woodlands, there's so much more to a healthy woodland than just trees. And it's the tallest trees which make up the canopy layer. In Scotland, these are species such as ash, birch, Scots pine, and oak. Broadly speaking, everything under the canopy can be called the understory, but it's actually made up of a few different layers. So first, and here we actually have, the, uh, the scrub layer. Now, this is made up of younger, smaller, oh, bug in the eye, younger, smaller, shade tolerant species such as hawthorn and holly. And then you have the herb layer, which is made up of wildflowers, grasses and ferns. And then finally, you have the ground layer, which is made up of a variety of different mosses, lichens, fungi and decaying matter. And many of these can be epiphytic and grow on mature trees, which just turns woodlands into these green wonderlands. All of these layers of habitat, they support a huge diversity of different flora and this in turn supports all kinds of different mammals, birds, insects and amphibians. And in fact, many of our woodland species are adapted to carry out different stages of their life cycle in the different layers of the woodland. And this means that many of our iconic woodland species simply cannot thrive until the understory is in place. Locker Woods is our first stop, and it's actually the site which featured in episode one. It's a relatively young woodland that was planted onto improved grasslands, so the understory was non-existent before we began work here. Well, there was a monoculture of grass, but this is less than ideal. Our work so far has included removing all of the old plastic tree guards and planting up some woodland wildflowers. And coming back this time and looking around, although they're still quite small, many of the flowers are beginning to establish themselves. It's important that we plant these flowers and kickstart the process as they will take decades, maybe even centuries to naturally establish. So what do we have in the tray here? What species? We have bugle in the tray here. A nice woodland plant. We're hoping it takes under this kind of dappled shade here. Yeah. So you're just, you're just going for areas which have a bit of light coming through maybe? Yeah, we're, we're looking at areas where there's very little vegetation at the moment. It was great to see a local volunteer group getting stuck in and even Ellie got involved too. So here we're planting bugle, wood avens and self hill. Lovely woodland flowers and as well as all of these flowers, we've also been planting aspen here too. Locker Woods has quite a bit of ash dieback. Here's, here's an ash, here, here's another one just completely dead. On the one hand, it creates valuable standing deadwood crucial to a functioning understory. How the bark peeling off creates a completely different habitat. I'll leave it on, but they'll, if you oh. took that off, there'll be loads of There'll be loads of insects under there, yeah. yeah. But on the other hand, given that this woodland is still quite young and what with many of the trees being ash, we could lose the canopy cover. We have recognized this and with Peter, we have been planting native aspen. It's also a tree which is regionally scarce and with all of its benefits to wildlife, it's great having it at Locker Woods. So Peter's just shown us here the nursery here at Aher. This is where a lot of the wildflowers and the aspen have begun their life. 
<laughs> so, so how has it been keeping everything going? Watered. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Keeping everything watered. Yeah. Everything. Uh, yeah, I mean, lots of volunteer help, which is what we needed. That's all our, this year's Aspen microprop plugs just been potted on recently. The nursery relies a lot upon the dedication of Peter and his team, but also local volunteers. Over the years, despite their small size, Ada have been prolific in finding, cultivating, and planting lots of rare flowers, shrubs, and trees all across Scotland. We're just trying to rescue a damselfly. Damsel in distress. Come out. Oh, it's cold out here now. It's like it's freezing out here. <laughs> yeah, but there's more to eat out here, right? Yeah. I will always insist on wearing shorts when it's the summer, even if I'm walking through stinging nettles. So this is another site where we've been doing some understory restoration. Now, compared to Locker Woods where we just were, this woodland is a little bit older and there is an understory here. There's some lovely flowers here. There's a butterfly flying around. But what we've been doing here is we've been introducing some rarer and just different species to increase the diversity. We'd missed it flowering, but one species which is doing well is Moscatel. It's quite common in the rest of the UK, but not so much in Scotland. In situations like this, when a plant is regionally rare, it's quite common to get a cutting and cultivate from remnant isolated populations and bring them to new sites. This site actually has some really nice natural characteristics of a healthy understory. And we will be explaining in just a minute how we can incorporate this into our strategy. So now I think would be a pretty good time to tell you how we're able to fund this project and all of our others here at Mossy Earth. So far for this project, we've put forward 10,784 pounds and 97 pence. As usual, we fund all of this work through our community through our Mossy Earth members, who contribute a small amount each month to allow us to set up these kinds of rewilding projects. If you are curious about helping us do this, then be sure to check out our other videos and of course, our website, where you can sign up. You can find it by typing in mossy.earth or through the link in the description and in the pinned comment down below. We work hard to be super transparent with how we spend the money and the impacts that we have. We do this on a weekly basis in the account while adding to our in-depth transparency database, writing a detailed monthly field report, and we make these videos here on YouTube. Plus, if you ever wanted to have a chat with the team, you can do this over on Discord. Our understory project is still very much in its infancy. This is why we've been thinking about how we can expand it. So far, we've removed plastic tree guards and planted wildflowers. It's a good start, but there are many more other elements which we want to include. Here's Ellie to explain this further. So I guess we've started with one of the simpler components with the, the flora. But obviously you've got, as your woodland matures, you want all of your mosses and lichens to come back in. Um, many of those come naturally if you've got source populations nearby. So it's about assessing those and where that's not possible, considering how you can sustainably create source populations within that woodland just to give it a bit of a kickstart. You've then got all of your fungi, both mycorrhizal fungi that are symbiotic with the tree and help it grow and survive in periods of stress, particularly drought. Uh, and then you've also got your saprotrophic fungi, which are really important for nutrient cycling and to keep the whole system running. The overall habitat structure, not about any particular species composition, tree structural diversity, deadwood, as well as young regeneration, like the complete range. And it doesn't have to be evenly distributed. You can have like the habitat mosaic, as long as it's there within the whole kind of landscape mm. scale, that's what we're looking to recreate. Cause that gives you the resilience to move for the different species to move through the landscape. As you can see, things can be a little complex when considering restoring all elements of an understory, but we're confident that we can pull together some really quite interesting methods that will enable us to achieve this. Our next steps are to run some pilot projects and really refine our methods and you'll be seeing this in our next episode on this project. So there's an update for you on our understory restoration project. I think it's shaping up to be a really quite exciting one. It's going to be a very impactful one. And yeah, it's just lovely being in this habitat when you've got all the flowers coming up and all the insects buzzing around. If you've got this far in the video, you may as well leave a like on it and drop a comment, say hi, say, say what's up. We love to chat with you guys down in the comments and also subscribe because we work really hard to produce these videos. Yeah, we just work hard to keep you updated on everything here at Mossy Earth. And if you want to become a member, go to our website. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.